What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. Birds will sing about your heart. Maybe the trees will whisper the word. Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their heart. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video. Today, as you can see and already tell by the title and the thumbnail, yes, we are going to be creating some cat and dog colors because I have two cats and I never done this before this is the very first time my cat they don't really wear colors because they hate it so you can believe that they hated me for making that intro <laughs> oh my god but I did I did try and they liked it actually, they didn't really get hissy or anything like that, so I was pretty happy. They behaved quite well, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was quite surprised, but this is how mine turned out, as you can see, super cute. My favorite is definitely this one here with the little bow, I think it's so cute, they looked so grown up, oh my god, they looked so cute, right? <laughs> So I'm just going to be stop rumbling because you can already see that I'm super excited, I'm smiling, my smile is from ear to ear, I'm like, I'm super super excited. If I don't stop talking right now, I'm never going to stop talking because when I get excited, I get rumbly and I start talking and talking and cannot stop. So enjoy the video everyone and if you do, make sure to give this video a massive thumbs up as you always do. Thank you for supporting the channel as you always do. Also do comment below if you enjoyed today's video and how you was for you to follow the tutorial and also don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this one and also don't forget to turn on the notification bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video and if you end up making this tutorial do share with me on my social media I would love to see your little creations and your little cats and dogs because uh, I am a cat lover so I would love to see it <laughs> so enjoy the video everyone and let's begin with today's video so these are all the materials we are going to be using. First, we have the yarns. I have here the Celine and the Gabriel yarns from Tesnum.com. Both of them are a mixture of acrylic and wool. This one here is more like a number four yarn, four, five. It's quite thick. This one is more like a number three. So you can decide into any yarn you want depending on uh, the thickness of the color for your cat that you want. Also for my tools, I'm using a small pair of scissors, tapestry needle, a tape measure and a three millimeters hook. This yarn here, I can actually crochet with a three millimeters hook. So you have to check the yarn that you have and then you match your hook. Usually I don't really follow um, the tag here. I just use any hook that I want and that it works nicely with my yarn. And last but not least, we are using some clasps. These ones right here, this one is a four centimeters clasp and I think it's 1.5 inches if I'm not mistaken. So you can check the description. All of the materials will be in the description below. You can decide if you wanna use a clasp. If not, then you can use the same method as one of the tutorials that I'm showing in today's video, which is just a chain and then you can tie a little bow going around your cat's neck but this is going to be up to you then you can decide how you want to do it so these are all the materials so now let's go into the next step so the first thing you're going to be doing is to take your measuring tape and measure your cat's neck it was quite easy measuring it they were quite lovely today they were not scratching me or anything like that or super angry because they my cats they don't really like colors I want to know how hard it's going to be for me to do the intro that I usually do. Hopefully I will be able to do it. But let's see, hopefully they will let me do everything that I want to do for today's video. <laughs> so go ahead and take your cat's neck measurement. So the first one that I've taken was Leon. <laughs> it's my ginger cat and his neck was 26 centimeters and that's 10 and a half inches. My other cat's neck, um, he's a black cat, his name is Pretuski. <laughs> his neck was 29, nearly 30 centimeters. 
and that's around 11 and a half, 12 inches. So once you have taken the measurement, we can go ahead now and continue the project. So the first one, I'm going to be using this yarn and we are also going to be needing a clasp. I'm going to be using, I don't know if I use the yellow one or the orange one. I think I'm gonna be using the yellow one for this one. And the first thing we have to do is to create a slip knot. So now you're going to be having the working yarn at the back of the clasp. You're going to be inserting your hook right here and you're going to be pulling up a loop going around this little thing that we have here at the top. And then right here you're going to yarn over and pull through the two loops that you have here at the top. Go around it, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the loops. It's kind of creating a single crochet but going around this gap instead of stitches. <laughs> I'm going to be doing five, I think. I think I'm doing five. At the moment I have one, two, three, four. You can just move them a little bit to the side and it's going to reveal a little space. And then here I'm going to create my last one. So I have five single crochets going around the top here. So we are going to be using a Tunisian crochet stitch pattern. So we have to move our yarn this side here. So first we are going to be creating a row with single crochets. So we have five single crochets here. So we also need to have five here at the top. So you're going to chain one, you're going to turn your project into this very first stitch, you're going to be going through that stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. So that's a single crochet. Then you're going to be doing exactly the same into the next and all of the other stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. So the chain doesn't count as a stitch. So three, four, and the last one, five single crochets. So now we have our yarn where it needs to be. So you're going to chain one and you're going to turn project. So now we are going to be starting with our Tunisian crochet. So also we need to have five loops right here at the top. So this loop here on the hook counts as this stitch here. So we skip this one and then you're going to pull up a loop into the next stitch. So pull up a loop and keep that on the hook and then do the same thing to the next one and then the next one. For the very last one, I don't like to get from the top here. I like to get from the side because then it gets really nice and straight our work just like here because if we get this one you will see that it's going to have kind of a little bump here. So don't do it here. Do it kind of like grabbing a, a stitch from the side. The first row is going to look like this, but that's completely fine. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through the very first one and keeping that on the hook. And then you're going to yarn over, pull through the next two, this one and this one. Yarn over, pull through two until the end. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. So these loops here, that it's straight and going towards the top are the ones that we are going to be working with now. So this one counts as the first one. So you're gonna go into the next loop. It's just right at the front. And then you're going to pull up a loop right here, keeping that on the hook. And then you're gonna go into the next one, do the same thing. And then this one, so now for the last one, we have four here and we need five. So you're gonna get this loop. You can get just 
like this if you want but for it to look a little bit nicer you need to try your best to get two little loops so try your best to get this one here from the back this one so just move it around and try your best to get two little loops you can see it's kind of in between right in the middle of that stitch so now you have the loops again so you're going to yarn over pull through the first one and keeping that loop on the hook and then you're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the next two and then the next two and then the last two so this is how it looks like so now you're going to be repeating again so pull up a loop into the next straight stitch here and then into the next one into the next one and then the last one is going to be this loop here that it's also going straight up but you will try to get another loop from the side here you will try to get two loops so the finishing looks a little bit better the more rows you do the better looking is going to be <laughs> it's always like that with Tunisian crochet so yarn over pull through the first one keeping that loop on the hook yarn over pull through the next two yarn over pull through the next two all the way down next two and then the last two so now all you have to do is to keep repeating the same steps so it's just repeating repeating all over until you have the sizing that you need remember that you have taken a measurement right at the beginning so that's the measurement you have to keep in mind I will come back once I have all of my rows completed and I will let you know how many rows I've done here with my Tunisian crochet stitch. So I'm going to be continuing here with my rows and then I will be back and we are going to go into the next step. So I have completed here all the rows as you can see and counting with the very first two I have 47 rows in total right now. So to finish it off we just have to do two more things three more things actually so now we are going to be creating single crochets so we repeat the same as we did at the beginning of our project so first I'm going to be chaining one and then I'm gonna go into the next loop available and then here I'm going to be creating a single crochet and then single crochet all the way down And then the last one, I'm just grabbing one, just one loop from the side and then single crochet. So now here we can chain one and we can fasten off so you can cut your yarn. So now you're just going to be pulling this yarn and you want to make it nice and tight to fasten off. So once you have this here, all we have to do is to create the same single crochets on this side you want to make sure that it's on the right side that you do everything on the right side of the clasp so we have the wrong side which is curved here kind of in and then we have the other curve that it's kind of on the outside which is the right side which is going to go around your cat's neck so now you can just repeat exactly the same as we did at the beginning so slip knot and then we are going to be creating five single crochets going around the other side here of the clasp So once you've done the five single crochets, we are going to fasten off. So chain one, cut the yarn and fasten off. And also you want to leave just a little bit of yarn extra here at the end so we can sew both parts together. You don't need a lot of yarn, it's just a little bit. I'm just going to be measuring this before I sew it together. So you can see the sizing that I have. So from here, 
all the way to the other side it's nearly 29 centimeters that's 11 and a half inches so now you're going to be threading the longest yarn you have here on this side into your tapestry needle you're going to be joining the two parts together on the reverse of the collar so you can see here my reverse and all you have to do is to match the single crochets on both sides so find the very first one and then sew it together so once you've done the first one go into the second single crochet here and the second one here sew it together and then the third one with the third one the fourth one with fourth and then the last one the last one with the last one so once you've done that we are going to weave in all of the yarns i'm going to show you this one because it's the same for all of the others i'm just gonna make it a little bit nice and neat here just move this yarn to kind of the reverse so all you have to do to weave in is to go through a couple of stitches back and forth what I like to do is to find another stitch and then I go through this stitch here twice, so once and then a second time and then the third one I create a little loop and then I go through the loop and then I pull nice and tight to fasten off so that's how I do my weave-ins once you've done that you can just go ahead and cut your yarn so now I'm just going to be repeating the weave-ins into all of my other yarns that I have right here and then I'll come back to show you how this one looks like. So once you have finished the weave-ins, you have something like this and you will have on the reverse so you just have to turn it and then you have the first one completed. This is how mine looks like. I think it looks really really pretty with this Tunisian stitch. And it also goes around really well so now this one is done so now i'm going to show you the next one using this beautiful yarn right here look at this so the first thing we are going to be doing is creating a slip knot and from here we are going to be starting our chain and you want to make a chain that it's a multiple of three so i'm going to be doing a chain of 63 so I'm just going to go ahead and do my chain. Once I have my chain ready, I will be back and I'm going to be showing you the next step. So once you have your chain, I have here a chain of 63. You want to measure your chain to see if it's the measurement of your cat's neck. Mine without pulling, it's 27 centimeters. And if I pull, it reaches to around 30 centimeters. So just make sure that your chain goes around and it fits nicely around your cat's neck. So once you have your chain, now we are going to be creating one row with double crochets right on top of this chain. So you're going to be skipping one, two, three into the fourth chain. We are going to be making our very first double crochet. So how you make a double crochet, you wrap the, the yarn around the hook, you go through the next stitch available, you pull up a loop and then you yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull the last two and then you just continue until you have covered all the chains that you have here. So I'm going to be creating my double crochets and then I will be back to show you the next step. So I'm here into my last double crochet 
And before we move on into the next row, let's just appreciate this yarn. Look at this. Oh, every time you look, there is a different color, a different shade. And oh my God, it's so beautiful. Oh, look at this. All my favorite colors together. Oh my God, I'm so in love. What do you think about this yarn? Look at this. And it's also so soft. I'm already thinking about it. What I'm gonna do with the rest of this yarn? Let me know what I should do. <laughs> so now we are going to be turning our project. So no chaining or anything like that. And then we are going to be skipping two, counting this one on the hook as the first one and this one here as the first stitch. So one, two, into the third stitch, we are going to be creating eight double crochets all into that same stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the last one, eight. So now you're going to be skipping two, so one, two, into the third one, you're going to be creating a slip stitch. Skip two, into the next one, you're going to be repeating again, exactly like here, this shell. So you're going to be creating eight double crochets. Once you've done the eight double crochets, you're going to be skipping one, two, into the third one, you're going to be slip stitching. And then from here, you're going to be repeating again this pattern. So skip two, into the next one, eight double crochets, all into that same stitch. Once you've done the eight double crochets, you're going to be skipping two, and then slip stitching into the third stitch from this one here. And then we are just repeating the same until the end of the row. So now to finish this row, you're going to be following the same steps. So you're going to be skipping two into the next one, eight double crochets. So once you've done the eight double crochets, here we are going to be having three stitches and then four counting this one from the chain three. So you're going to be skipping all of these. You're going to go straight into the chain three one. And then right here, you're going to be slip stitching to connect the sides together. So that's how it looks. Now I'm just going to show you how this yarn looks because it's so pretty. Oh my God. I love it. Oh my goodness, everybody. Look at this. It looks so pretty. I think it's going to look amazing on both of my cats. I cannot wait to try this on them. Oh my God, I'm so in love. Maybe I can make two of these and then both of my cats can wear at the same time. Imagine how cute. Oh my goodness, I'm super excited already. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten shells going across. Now is the time that you can decide if you want to place a clasp here at the end or if you want to make a chain and then just have a little bow at the top that's what i'm going to be doing for this one so you know how that can look but you can also have the same as this one here so i'm just going to measure here for you before i move on into the next step i'm not stretching it i'm just leaving it like this and it's measuring 29 centimeters, 11 and a half inches. So what we have to do, it's from here already, we are going to be making our chain, come back with single crochets and attach to this side with a slip stitch. So right here, start the chain. I think I'm gonna do around 25, 30, you can do as long as you want. Yes, yeah, so a chain of 25 
I think I'm happy with that. And then we are gonna go back with single crochets. So skip the very first one, go into the next one, and then single crochet. Go into the next one, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then create single crochets going all the way down. And then I'll meet you right at the end. Once you get back, make sure that you do the last one. Here. And then all we have to do is to find a stitch that is kind of from here at the base. Any stitch. And then you're just going to be connecting it with a slip stitch. And then you're going to chain one, cut the yarn, fasten off, and you can already weave in. Right here, we could have actually left a little bit more yarn, so we could have done the chain already, but because I didn't, if you didn't either, because you probably didn't, we are going to be first creating a slip knot, and then you're going to be following the same steps. So first, you have to find this shell on the other side, and then just find any stitch that is close to this shell, and then you pull up a loop, and then you're just going to be slip stitching right here. And then from here you can do exactly the same as you did on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I will be back, and then I'll show you the last step for the little collar. So I have the collar ready right here. I did weave in and everything. So now the last thing we have to do is to create a little bow, because of course I had to do for my cat's collar because that's just the cutest little thing ever. So the first thing we are going to be doing, it's creating a magic ring. And then right here, we are going to be chaining four. So one, two, three, four and then we are going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook twice you're gonna go around the magic ring and then you're going to pull up a loop and then you're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the next two and then yarn over and pull through the last two this is a i call it triple crochet or some people i think they call it treble crochet so now we are going to be doing that three two more times because we need to have four in total. So we have a chain and then four triple crochets. Now you're going to chain four and then we are going to be slip stitching back into the magic ring so here on the other side we are going to chain four and then we are going to be repeating again the same as we did here so four triple crochets Then chain four, one, two, three, four, go back into the magic ring and slip stitch that in place. Just leave the yarn here. Now you're going to be finding the yarn from the magic ring and then you're just going to be pulling that close. There we go. So now with this yarn here, the working yarn we are going to fasten off but we are going to be leaving a little bit of yarn so we can create the middle of the bowl so chain one and then just leave a little bit of yarn I will show you the amount but it's not a lot just this much as you can see and then from here you can fasten off this yarn and then we have the little bow already completed now the only thing we have to do first i just like to wrap this one around the bow because then this one stays kind of inside and we don't have to weave in 
and then I get the other one, the longer one, and then I just go around it for a couple of times. You don't have to do too much. You see, you don't need a lot. I got too much here. There we go. I think I'm happy with that. So now you're going to be taking it to the back. You're going to be threading this yarn into your tapestry needle. First, you just want to hold this yarn here at the back, and then you're going to be finding a stitch from these loops. Just grab a few like yarns from there and then you're just going to be kind of locking this yarn here at the back and then you go through again leave a little loop and then just fasten off and then what I like to do is just go through here at the back a couple of times so it just locks the yarn in place just like this. The fun part is you're going to be folding the collar in half and then you're going to be finding the middle which is right here and we are going to be sewing ooh, the bow in place. Oh my god this looks so cute already! So you're just gonna go into a stitch from here from the collar and then sew that in place, you go back and then you just go through these yarns here right in the middle just to lock this little ball here in place. Then you can do that one more time. And that's all you have to do. So now I just grab one stitch here from the back of the bow and then I just create a little fasten off here just to lock the yarn in place. And then the last thing I do, I just go through the back here again just to hide the yarn in place. So once you've done that, you can now go ahead and cut this yarn and we are done! We are done with our little collar. Oh my god! Oh, it's gonna look like a grown-up, a little senior. <laughs> look at this! Look at this! And then right here, you can just make a little bow, look! Just like this, a very tiny little bow. You can do this longer if you want, I just didn't want to make it too long. Look at this everybody, look at this cuteness. And now we have two completed, look at that, it's so cute. I cannot wait to try on my cats, they're probably gonna kill me because they always remove the color, I don't know why, they don't like it. <laughs> I always waste my money buying colors, so I thought of making crochet ones because then it can make as many as I want. But yeah, everyone, oh my god, I'm super excited about these. Uh, I love them actually a lot. I think my cats will hate it, but that's okay. <laughs> Oh my god. So yeah, everyone, thank you so, so much for sticking out until the end. I'm already smiling so much, so I'm super excited about this one. I cannot wait to just get my cats and put this on them. <laughs> if you end up making these, let me know in the comments below how it was for you to follow the tutorial and also do share with me on my social media, on Instagram or Facebook, if you make these for your cats or dogs. Remember that you can actually make these for your little dogs too. It's not only for cats, you can actually make for dogs. I'm making for cats because I only have cats, but if you have a dog, do make for your dog too. I would love to see your little creations and the different colors you're going to be using. So thank you so much, everyone. Do leave your like as you always do. Thank you so much for all the support you have here for our channel. And I'll see you guys on my next video, which is next Friday. Bye. Love you. Kisses. <laughs>